Hello YouTube. Um, so I'm here today. I'm going to do a uh, Toyota Corolla Stock Car 2022. The Brazilian Stock Cars and AMS2 are really good. Uh, and I've got a race coming up Sunday that I'm going to practice with. Uh, but I just want to go through and share my setup real quick with you in case it's uh, helpful. Um, one thing to keep in mind is this is going to be a rainy session. Um, so I made some adjustments to the car to make it more manageable for me uh, to drive in the rain because I was spinning out everywhere. Um, so, um, so let's just dive right into it. Um, so you can see I got the race session set to 30 minute race. Uh, I set it for 3 p.m. I put it on rain and um, typically for my practice routine I set three AI drivers. I put myself in the back of the field and uh, I set the AI to 100, aggression and skill. Uh, and then that way I can kind of just uh, let them go ahead of me and then try to chase them, you know, give them a lot of room to get out way in front of me and then try to catch up to them. Um, seems to work pretty well. Uh, and I try to keep the racing line on until I'm, um, until I'm comfortable with the track, especially if it's a track that I'm not familiar with, like this one. Um, so this should be pretty fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit start, and then this will load up, and uh, then I can talk about the setup here. Um, so this car is a really powerful car. Um, the stock settings, there's a lot of differential lock to the rear end, and in the rain, that's a recipe for disaster. You'll end up spinning out all over the place. Um, so... So one of the most important things I did with this is to, you know, obviously put on the wet tires. You know, that's kind of a given. Um, I did adjust the brake bias just a little bit to the rear. Uh, drop the brake pressure just a little. It's at 90. You know, obviously you adjust those to whatever your taste is. But, um, uh, but I think the key thing that really helped me out was uh, loosening up both the front and rear anti-roll bars. And I also, I'm pretty sure I reduced the slow rebound uh, a little bit in the front and rear, just slightly. Um, just to kind of give the car a little bit more, um, <laughs> make it able to absorb my wild inputs if I start to uh, get it, you know, get it loose, right? Get it spinning around a little bit. Um, I've got the... And this is interesting too. So I actually towed in the front wheels. So the, wheel, the front wheels are towed in uh, and the rear wheels are towed in. And the idea there is um, it keeps you going in a straight line a little bit easier. It keeps it a little more stable, um, but also it's gonna help to generate a little bit of heat because the pavement's gonna be a lot colder because it's raining. So, you know, between that and you can see I've got a pretty aggressive camber angle going. That gives me plenty of grip in the corners um, and then on the rear, I've got a little bit of camber going also, but not too crazy because you still have to have enough grip in the straight in order to get good traction, especially because, um, and this I think was the most important setup change I did, was that I opened up the uh, differential. So I reduced the, the preload to five newtometers, reduced the number of clutches, uh, and then increased the... Uh, the angles for the power ramp and the coast ramp. So basically what that does is it uh, applies less locking to uh, the differential. So it allows the differential to slip a lot more so that when you're going through those wet corners, the tires can freely spin um, without locking together. And I find that what happens is you get more power onto the road that way because if one tire slips maybe the other one is still allowed to grip a little bit whereas if it just locks you know you're going to have this tendency to just convert all of those sideways g-forces into uh spinning the car around uh whereas if you you know loosen up the differential you know you stand i feel like a better chance at uh you know getting some of that power down onto the pavement um so anyway, I'm going to do a couple laps. Uh, I set 70 liters of fuel because I set it for 63 and ran out. 
I'm thinking 70 is going to be enough for this session. I'm still testing that. Um, and, uh, and I've got the fuel map all the way up. This car does have push to pass, so if you hit the push to pass button, you're going to waste a lot of gas. Um, potentially, <laughs> depending upon where on track you do that. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, enjoy. I'm going to go ahead and start my session here. And I'll drive a couple laps for you. And then you can be the judge of whether my setup's actually any good or not. It works for me. And I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like whatever you can do to make your, your setup comfortable for you to drive consistently really is the key. And what I'm learning as time goes on is that consistency a lot of times can be more important than lap times. So I'm purposely getting off to a bad start here to let the AI get way ahead. Which is what I usually do for practice. that another shot. Another try.
so it seems like a good place to stop. Um, so anyway, you get the idea with the setup. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm not real quick with this bar and track yet, but that's why we practice. So, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.